mighty London came an Irishman one day. As the streets are paved with gold, so everyone was gay. Singing songs of Piccadilly, Strand and Leicester Square. Till Paddy got excited, then he shouted to them there. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way. Let's get you, let's get you some more of this. Oh! Hi there! Hi there! Good dog. Didn't see you there. We are Pittsburgh Connections, and we're out here uh, in the field, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting very close to the front line. We have our friend here, Kevin. Now, we are LARPers, but Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I've been doing uh, World War I living history reenactment at uh, the Newville, Pennsylvania site for about five years. The site is a private site. It's not a public uh can't have a public area to, to watch it. We have uh, machine guns that uh, fire blanks. We have our rifles, uh, including the one that I have, which is an original. Uh, we have biplanes. Uh, we have facsimile for gas. We have facsimile for uh, grenades as well. So we do a lot. Of, it's a combat tactical that's done twice a year in uh, Newville, Pennsylvania. So you're a rather expert on Yeah, World I had to War do a I. lot of study for it. Kevin's very knowledgeable on the German front. So we've asked him to come out here and talk to us a little bit about what kind of costuming uh, the average German soldier would wear. So right. Kevin? So actually I'm going to use Chris for a second. So Chris, sure. stand up. Uh, Chris is wearing the earlier 1905 uh, Waffenfrock. What this is, is it's a darker gray. Um, it is a, uh, has a lot more of the red piping on it. The buttons are more uh, brass. Uh, the one that I'm going to show you that I wear also has them a little bit more. You spin around for a little bit. This is more of the parade style that they would have in the back. And this allows for a lot of good range of motion. What was going on was is that uh, towards the latter year, they just simplified this uh, a lot of it. A lot of the uh, piping had changed. The cut actually changes considerably enough for that. And they just got away with a lot of the uh, added to this. The pickle hob is leather. It's just hardened leather. This is a 19th century design. Uh, during World War I, they would cover these with a canvas cloth over them. And then they started eventually removing this. So because this was popping up and this made it really easy for people to like, oh look, there's a German, we're going to shoot him. <laughs> um, made it very, very easy. Plus, you know, this is nice and bright and shiny and it was cool, but then you had to keep track of that and clean it and everything like that in the field, they didn't care. Um, so what he's wearing is actually uh, very common amongst the, the, the um, uh, enlisted officers, the sergeants, and the officers as well, which is basically which your, your standard Sam Brown belt. Um, the German soldiers, thank you for me, the German soldiers enlisted did not. Uh, we would wear the, the standard belt with, uh, this is the Prussian one, which says Gott mit uns, which is God is with us. Um, and this is the interesting thing that will throw a lot of modern people out, the rough side's out. The oh. smooth sides on the inside, the rough sides on the outside, which I thought was very strange at first until I realized why. And the reason why is because you have a lot of equipment hanging off of this and you don't want it sliding around. So this made things a lot easier. And as you can see, I mean, I've worn this through a lot. It's taken a lot of, of, of abuse to this. Looks like it. Um, so we would wear three of these. They would have, these, these are the ammo pouches. So with these pouches, the German soldier would carry about 65 rounds, uh, 10 in each of these pouches, two sets of these pouches, and then five rounds in their, uh, in their rifle. The thing with these is the Germans fired basically an eight millimeter sh uh, round, which is roughly a, just slightly bigger than an average Nerf dart. So Nerf darts <laughs> will fit in these things perfectly. For LARPing, awesome. there's the two pouches that you will see a lot of. Uh, those are the Eastern European ones, and they're all over the place that you can get in the surplus stores. Huh. Um, and they are the same, they're roughly about the same size. If you'll notice, they, uh, they have a strapping system, so this whole thing just straps into the belt. You just pop that, grab your shell, grab it, lock it in, and fire. Uh, Main things are a lot easier. This is part of it. The second part of our kit will include the uh, bread bag. Now the bread bag would have a strap that would sit as you come across like this. The German soldiers stopped using the bread bag strap and actually used the hooks of those to hook into the back of the uh, pouches to give it the extra strength. So they would actually have a strap that came this way and then they would hold it here. So you have your, your bread bag right behind here, 
Yeah. You carry some extra ammo, uh, little tins of food that you might have had, your basic knife. I can't remember if I got anything in here. Nope. Um, it's a two pouch. It's got an outer pocket and an inner pocket. As you can see from the usage, this is its original color of gray, then it starts to with dirt and everything else. A uh, lot of leather reinforcements on this, and it also has a hook for your canteen. Nice. So you'd have that here, and you'd have a fully canteen. You're going now. You're starting to have a lot of weight. Yeah. On, yeah. Onto on, onto your onto your kit. The next part of your kit would be your gas bag, which you would want to have about here. And this one, there's a couple. You usually see the the, the canister ones, yeah. uh, which then carried over into World War II. Uh, this one happens to be the earlier cloth one, which I've always preferred. Uh, however, there's a disadvantage to the cloth ones uh, oh, wow. over the years. <laughs> then you get to, which is your your uh, uh, gas mask. And the gas mask is a two-part gas mask. And um, these are commercially available. There's a lot of, there's a, there's a big industry that does living history. So uh, they're, they're kind of pricier, uh, but you can get away with uh, the costume versions like these, which is perfectly fine. Um, but this is a standard gas mask. We were drilled to have less, we had less than 15 seconds. We were supposed to be about 10. That when we would have the gas alarms go off, which would happen a lot, we had to pop the helmet off and we had to get this on. So there you have that. The, uh, you can see these are larger, far much larger than the other ones uh, have in terms of that on there, and uh, they would fog up. Can I, can I have you say that again? Yes. Just because I don't know if that got muffled. Yeah, that might have been probably muffled. <laughs> the uh, uh, the glasses on here, they're a little bit larger than you see in a lot of mark modern uh, gas masks now these days. And uh, but this is all canvas, and the disadvantage to these are is is that even with the uh, cancer, the glass part will fog up. So I'm running around in battle and I've got smoke and I've got grenades going off and then this starts to fog up and your first reaction is you want to go in there and start doing that, which is absolutely dangerous to do, which would get you killed. Um, these are, uh, this is also one of the reasons why you start to see less and less of the big beards. Uh, my goatee is way longer than normal. <laughs> in, in the end of night towards the end of 1917 1918 the germans still would even have some of them would still have goatees but the full big beards were gone at that point in time um the we joke there was a world war one uh show on tv on, on the history channel and they had hitler with the big mustache and he almost died in a gas attack and afterwards he took his trusty bayonet and <laughs> shaved off his gas mask with his trusty bayonet, which is, which as history, as living history reenactors, we thought was hilarious because these things are not razor sharp. <laughs> and they're not razor sharp for a very, very big reason, which is that they get dull really fast and they were designed for stabbing, not necessarily for cutting. Um, and that's pretty much how the kit runs. I'm gonna show a couple of different things in terms of the boots. The boots started off in these long leather boots. This is the German styles were used. These, um, these are, uh, 19th century to, I mean, they're still even using this this day. The design itself hasn't changed much. Uh, they're leather uh, with heel plates. The problem was is that as the war progressed, the use of leather or the capability to get more leather started to, to dwindle. So you saw a lot more of the low shoes. shoes. And with these low shoes, you can see the same thing. It's got the uh, heel plate on it, and then it has these hard tacks in there. Um, to get this grip. You can see, I mean, I've worn this a couple of times, several times during reenactments, how much the, the rocky uh, terrain just eats into these boots. If I did not have these, these metal studs in there, uh, this would, I'd have to have it redone. Um, the laces on them are standard laces, but the, these boots, these are not that much different. Yeah, can you pull up your Throw up your leg. Throw my leg. Throw up your leg. Yeah. The design is Whoa, Don't get stingy. Yeah. <laughs> then they get <laughs> but if you're doing as a LARP, don't worry about it. This kind of stuff works perfectly fine. Same mm -hmm. thing with Chris's boot. It's not that much different. You know, he's wearing a standard hiking boot. These are low boots. They're the same round, to, round, round toe design. 
um, and the same heel design. So what happens is, is that with the low boots, they start to bring out the putties. And the putties have been around for all the way down to the Viking era. This is about three uh, yards of fabric that's wool. It's wrapped around the leg. We have, you see a video of uh, showing how it's wrapped. And it'll cover a multitude of sins because you're starting here and it just rolls up. The uh, Germans had their field bra. French had more of a high blue, which made it easier to shoot them. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. But the, uh, this is this basic wrap. At the end of the wrap for these, there's a tie in them. So simply it's just, uh, just you, you tie it off and you're good to go. Uh, the problem with putties is that they, they the ties start to get loose and then you end up with a puddle of putty at the bottom of your foot. Uh, <laughs> just like that. And then you have to stop and pull. It was. It was a puddle mm -hmm. of putty. And you had to pull them off and rewrap the leg. The other problem was is that if you are going to do putties, do not wrap them too tight because you're going to cut off circulation. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. you do is you flex your leg as you're doing it so that that way you're not, it's not too, too, too tight and not too loose. Um, you can get uh, different types of pins if you really want to, just make things a little bit easier and pin them at the end. Uh, I would not recommend a safety pin. I would recommend uh, uh, small, like almost like the cloak pin types. Mm -hmm. stuff. The, the, uh, they're, they're hooks. They hook into it, they hook into it and just hold on to it. Um, those work, work perfectly fine. And you can find these commercially. Um, there's a lot of sites that actually under the Viking sites, if you're looking at any of the LARP, LARP ones, because they sell them there, yeah. and they sell them in multitudes of colors, from blues to reds to browns to, to even the grays. Um, so there's a bunch of, of, of those. The, they're great with that. That's the nice thing about them. Um, they're also really good because of barbed wire. Uh, the, I'm wearing the woolen pants here. Um, I'm, I'm wearing more canvas. He's yeah. wearing more of the canvas. Mm -hmm. The other thing, if you're going to LARP, corduroy pants were, were becoming more and more prominent in late war. Um, mostly by the German side, but also some of the other sides. Uh, because again, it's, a, it's, it's that ribbed can, uh, uh, wool cotton, mm -hmm. and you can get away with it. It looks period. And I'm gonna have to find my corduroy pants. You get some corduroy <laughs> pants, and if you want to you know, go to a thrift store, and uh, for the German uh, stormtroopers, they would wear the corduroy pants, and then they would, actually even with these woolen pants, they would sew leather knee pads onto there uh, because you're doing a lot of crawling mm -hmm. on the ground. You're doing a lot of, you're coming in here, uh, you don't, unless you're, unless you're moving, you do not want to be standing uh, in, in the battlefield. And then you have a lot of the, the barbed wire, um, which catches on just about everything under the sun, which is what it was designed for. All right, we want to thank our buddy Kevin over here for uh, coming out and helping us show it off a lot about the costuming. We had a great time today. Well, thank you guys for inviting me on this. Thank you. We'd, we'd like Dark to have you back show. sometime. All right. So, we are Pittsburgh Connections, and we'll see you soon. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>